Hello, beautiful creatures. Welcome back to my channel, Fira. If you're new here, my name is Cordelia, and today I'm going to be sharing a Goddess Persephone cosplay tutorial with you. I'm gonna show you how I did my makeup, my hair, and put my costume together. So if you like this really, really pretty eyeshadow look using multi-chromes with Terra Moons and Lethal Cosmetics, just keep watching. I am super excited to be doing this Goddess Persephone tutorial with you. So let me tell you what I've already done first prep. I've done my brows and to do my brows, I use Lime Crime's Smoky Brow Pen to fill in my tail. My brows are naturally sparse. I've never over plucked them. In fact, I haven't even like done anything with them in like, I don't know, probably two years. They're just, this is how they are. They're very sparse. They stay there. It's what nature gave me. So um, then I move on to the Lime Crime Bushy Brow Pomade Stick in Sleek Black and fill that in. The smoky and sleek black are a great match for my natural hair color, which you can't see right now, but that's okay. And then just to add a little bit of like fun and sparkle, I used About Face Fractal Glitter Brow Gel in Interlude, which is like an opalescent pink, because I figured it looked nice with my pink and purple hair. I put on Urban Decay's Eden Eyeshadow Primer, which is a light creamy beige that really blends into my skin tone. If you ask my opinion, what do you think? <laughs> And I also tight lined my eyes with Nabla's Cupid's Arrow in Black. The Nabla Cupid's Arrow in Black and the Melt Cosmetics Onyx Gel um, Liner are the two things that last the longest on my waterline. My eyes are very watery and have oily hooded lids, in case you can't tell. <laughs> so, eyeshadow primer and waterproof products are a must. So, my thoughts on the Goddess Persephone are that she has sort of like a black and burgundy thing going on. I'm going to start with a multitasking round brush that's from Real Techniques, but any sort of like multitasking rounded brush, uh, like dome shaped brush that's got a little bit of give to it is good. I'm using Lethal Cosmetics Cascade, which is a cool toned pomegranate red. And I'm going to start at the outer corner and blend it in circles. And then I'm gonna continue through all the way to like right here at the inner part of my eye. This is going to help give my eyes some structure. And I think it's gonna look fabulous. I should switch to a different mirror. This is my Impressions Vanity Mirror, which is pretty awesome. It lights up, it has two sizes, and it's really easy to travel with. I think Mickey may have told me about this. But either way, it's a lot easier to travel with this Impressions Vanity Mirror than it is with my Simple Human Mirror. And because it has like this little like LED light feature, you can turn that on and off when you're um, traveling. So if you're ever in like an Airbnb or a hotel that has terrible lighting, like how often does that happen to us? <laughs> Quite a lot. And um, it'll, be, it'll help you like be able to see to put your makeup on. So that's my primary reason for why I bought it and I'm very happy with it. I'm probably gonna customize it at some point, like maybe put a bunch of like gems on the back or something, just to make it look more, more like something I would like. Now, I have hooded eyes, as I mentioned, so when I'm looking into the mirror, I can just see the color coming up um, over my visible lid, and that's what I want. I like how that looks. So I'm gonna keep it like that. The next color that I'm going to apply is Terra Moon's Terra Sphere. And I've loaded up my brush, and I'm going to spritz uh, Urban Decay's All Nighter on it just because I like to do this with shimmery colors and then I tap off my brush a little bit and I'm going to put this onto my lid. This is a beautiful multi-chrome. <sighs> Multi-chromes are my favorite. I love multi-chromes and mattes together. I'm going to use Lethal Cosmetics Moonbeam which is a cool ivory and it matches pretty much matches my skin tone. And I'm using a pencil brush, this is a KVD's brush. And I basically take Moonbeam along the edge of Cascade to blend it out. I'm using another flat lid brush and spritzing it with Urban Decay's All Nighter Spray to apply Terramine's Blood Moon to the outer part of my eye. This is gonna give me some nice multi-chrome depth. As an aside, I truly feel like 
Terra Moon's Blood Moon would make a great one and done smoky eye if you like bold multi-chromes. I'm just blending the edges a little bit between Blood Moon and Terra Sphere. I'm going to use this brush from Sydney Grace and apply Cascade along like the outer part of my lower lid by the lash line. I was sent a bunch of the Sydney Grace brushes in PR and I really, really like them. My only complaint, and this is just my personal preference, is I don't like that it doesn't tell you what they designed the brush for. That's one of the things I really love about my Sigma, Sigma brushes is that they say, <clears throat> hey, we designed this as a smudge brush or a detail brush, and then you can go from there and make decisions on what to do with it. I'm going to go back again with that same brush that I used the pointed brush from KVD with Moonbeam, Lethal Cosmetics Moonbeam, and I'm going to use it to just blend underneath where I applied Cascade at the lower lid. I'm now taking a Sigma E21 brush and I'm going to spray it again with a little bit of Urban Decay Solstice. And I'm going to use this at the inner corner. This is a really gorgeous, in my opinion, um, like champagne color that has a pink and green shift. I'm using it at the inner corner and just along like the inside of the inner lower lash line. Maybe the inner one third of the lower lash line. I am going to take the same brush again, uh, that's from Sydney Grace, and use it with a little bit of Terra Sphere and go from sort of like the middle, or go apply to sort of like the middle of the lower lash line by the lashes. I have no idea why I make super silly faces when I do this, but apparently it helps me apply my makeup. And taking the same brush again, I'm going to use a little bit of Terra Moon's Blood Moon and do like the outer part. And I'm connecting it back here at the corner where I added the darkness. Yeah, I love this. I think it's so pretty. What do you think? Can you see the multi-chrome shifts? I'm trying to move around a little bit so you might be able to see them as much as possible. All right, I'm back. I applied my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. I have naturally long lashes. They just don't ever want to hold a curl because of my um, hooded lids. In fact, the way my hooded lids weigh down on my eyes actually make my um, lashes want to angle downwards. So it's a constant uphill battle to try to get my lashes to show up unless I do like a lash lift. And so I haven't been doing lash lifts lately. I don't know if I'll be able to do them again. I quit my full-time job and have been just focusing on my consulting work because my consulting work feeds my soul and my full-time job was killing me, literally. <laughs> So, all right, now that I feel like the eyes are done, what do we think? I think I wanna blend <laughs> just a little bit one more time right here. There we go. I love these Persephone eyes, so let's work on the Persephone complexion. All right, I'm going to put on Auric Glow Lust in Morganite 2.0. I love this either as a sheer glowy foundation on its own or as the base for a glowy look. I typically prefer light coverage foundations that glow because I have dry skin. And I really feel like despite having rosacea, I do a really good job of managing it. So I don't like full coverage on me. I think it looks great in other people, but it's just not my preference in general. Now, I always like to grab a concealer brush. Today I'm using Cloven Hollows Concealer Brush and go around my eyes and my brows just to make sure everything looks great. I feel like I'm always the most sensitive about my eyes. Going to use Ritual de Fees Galatea in this lip brush, I think, by Urban Decay. And I'm gonna try to, I guess, like just point conceal. Yeah. 
The next thing I'm going to apply to my skin is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm in shade one. I also own this in Universal, but I typically use shade one now most of the time. It gives just a little bit of coverage and I like the blur. The way I personally like to apply it is I will take my fingers, these two fingers, and rub it in like a circle to kind of like warm it up a little bit. And then I will rub it between my other few fingertips and then just kind of start tapping it and applying it on my face. I genuinely think it's a really cool product. And between that and the arc, it gives me just a little bit more coverage. Blurs my imperfections, but I don't feel like it's a heavy weight on my face. If I were to lose my entire makeup collection today, the first two base products that I would absolutely run back out to buy would be the Arik Glow Lust and Morganite 2.0 and the Danessa Myricks Gimme Skin Balm in shade one. And I basically just kind of patted this all over my face because I'm just giving myself a little bit of blur. I am going to go back with this Cloven Hollow brush and I'm just trying to make sure everything is nicely blended. The next thing I'm going to apply for my Goddess Persephone look is Silk Naturals VIP. This is a gorgeous sheer tan iridescent blush and I feel like it's the perfect color for Goddess Persephone. I'm using this Real Techniques Angled Blush Brush to apply it and if you've never applied a loose brush before, you just kind of dip your brush into the product, tap off the excess because there's absolutely going to be excess. <laughs> I'm going to apply it. And I feel like it just gives me this like really beautiful, healthy glow with a little bit of iridescence. Also, I love the fact that this is a sheer blush. I feel like it's, I feel like, you know, I've mentioned before I'm heavy handed with eyeshadow. I feel like this often applies to other makeup products. So having a product that just makes it easier for me to apply it and not be heavy handed is a, a blessing. I'm gonna take this fluffy Real Techniques brush. Uh, I'm just gonna blend at the edges of my blush. I like to do this to make sure that it's, you know, diffused properly on my face. I'm going to apply Kalitos' <laughs> Space Age Star Surfer, which is like this, <laughs> this Liz does not wanna say it, but like this silvery champagne color with this Real Techniques F03 highlighter brush. I'm going to put this onto the high point. is a really really pretty color for this look. I don't often feel like wearing pink based highlighters because I always have so much surface redness slash pinkness in my skin from rosacea I'm like no no pink but for this look I think it's perfect. I'm taking a little bit more of VIP and I'm gonna put a little bit on my pimples. I didn't need to put that much. I'm basically taking this blush color and just putting it into a little bit of like my hairline and the temple and stuff. To add a little bit more dimension to my face, I think I am going to use NYX Sweet Cheeks Glow Blush in Soto. This is like my second or third one of these, and as you can see, I hit pan. I love it because it's a very nice, affordable drugstore option for what I feel tends to be a goof-proof contour for me. Again, heavy-handed. I can sometimes overdo it, and I don't want to overdo it. I want to just, I want to look, you know, a little chiseled, like I've been working out, because I do work out. <laughs> But I feel like you only need to use like the little lightest brush of the product on your skin. Oh, and this is a Milk Cosmetics contour brush that I'm using. And I'm just feathering just a little bit more of the hairline just to 
Like I said, give me a little bit of shape. And I guess I'll put a little bit along my jaw. But I'm only using what's already on the brush because I don't want to overdo it. I absolutely have that tendency. Okay, so I feel like this still looks a little off. So what I'm gonna do to correct it is use my Fenty 105 Pro Filter Powder. This is a yellow toned powder, which is perfect for my very fair neutral to cool yellow undertone skin tone. And I'm just sort of lightly using it to blend and shape around my face. I had it a long time ago and liked it. And then when I got rid of um, a lot of my loose collections, like a lot of my loose stuff away to friends, I must have gotten rid of it. But I saw it recently. I was like, oh, I need that. Because I like I always gravitate towards, I think, nude blush colors because I like such strong eyes and usually strong lips. To create my perfect lip color, I used Lime Crimes Tarot Pencil and then I layered Lime Crimes Fangs Pencil on top because I wanted to create like this deep sort of smoky red. I am going to top my perfect lip with Silk Naturals Potion, which is a sheer black and I feel like it's going to give me that like blackened pomegranate kind of a type of thing that I'm going for. Yes, I love this color. It looks fantastic. And I'm back. I pulled my hair up into a high ponytail. I have very long, very like healthy hair that's somewhere I guess now between like medium and thick. First time in my life. It's it's all due to my diet, I swear. Um, so I pulled up into a high ponytail. I also switched into my dress. This is my goddess Persephone dress. It's a purple, but it like this color of purple to me. It rides the line of wine and burgundy, which is perfect. I have a lot of like burgundy wine accessories, so I thought that'd be great for this dress. Oh, I bought a size medium. I wear between a size four and a size six, depending on like how the clothing is cut. Um, and I'm anywhere from an extra small to a medium, depending on the brand. <laughs> But for this brand, for this dress, I am in a size medium and the color is called purple. Now for my goddess Persephone, what I think I'm going to do with her hair is create a big braid. So I've already pulled it back in the high pony and brushed it out. This is going to be um, like a big puffy braid, so I'm not even going to braid it like all the way down, but I figured I would. Hopefully you can see. Maybe, hmm, I feel like my chair might give it a little bit more, but we'll try. This is just a typical three strand braid, nothing fancy. I'm not doing it tight. <laughs> and once I get, I don't know, maybe halfway down, I'm going to put a clear elastic into it to hold the end. Carly did my hair like this um, at least once when we were in Vegas and I was like, oh, this is really cute and easy. I should do this more often. We're going to stop about right here and put the last again. And then I'm going to go back and puff it. And what I mean by puff it is just kind of take it and pull at it to make it bigger. I think that's very cute. I also have this adorable little black headpiece that I'm going to tie on in a moment because I feel like the goddess Persephone would wear a black uh, flower crown. This is the other reason why I decided on the high ponytail braid is so that I don't accidentally uh, catch my hair when I'm trying to tie this on. The good thing about this style, particular, uh, particularly of um, headwear, is that I don't tend to get a headache from it like I do some headbands. Yeah, I think that looks great. Ooh, I forgot there's something else I wanted to do. I have these cute little magic purple nail gems, and I call them magic and purple because I'm going to zoom in so you can see them. 
they shift from purple to burgundy to blue. They're little skulls and I'm going to use um, lash glue and put them on my cheeks. Not all of them, obviously. But I felt like that would be a nice touch since, you know, Persephone, the goddess Persephone is married to Hades. So if you have problems getting your little glitter thing to stay on like I am right now, I think I'm actually going to get, try this again. I'm gonna put glue on my face again. Or actually I'll put glue on the back of this little guy again. And um, I'm going to blow on it so it gets tacky because I think that was my problem. That and I think I normally do much lighter uh, gems. This one's pretty big for my base. Okay, that's yeah, that's definitely sticking better. So just blow on it, and then I'm gonna hold it here for a little bit. Yeah, I love that. I think that is so cute. Oh, I meant to tell you that if you love these eyeshadow colors and everything, you should check out. This is the DIY eyeshadow palette that I built for Gothic Charm School. I'm going to put a link to that video up here. You can go check it out. But I love these colors. I built this palette with Lethal Cosmetics and Terra Moons Cosmetics. Very, very pleased with it. I've been using it, I don't know, quite a lot. Basically, I've been rotating between this and the Lethal Cosmetics 1UP palette, which is Blacklight Reactive. <laughs> The next part of my costume is this little pomegranate necklace. I found this along with my dress and my little headpiece on Amazon. So this was a super easy costume to put together. For shoes, I have these cute little burgundy sandals that kind of give that goddess vibe. This is my finished look of the goddess Persephone. And I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Do you, you like the big puffy braid, like the crown? necklace, the dress, the eyeshadow. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I am so glad that I am going to have more time to spend with you and be on YouTube, so I hope to hear from you soon. I love you, my friends, and I'll see you next time.